Yo, what's going on guys? Go on the game. We're back with another reaction video. As I said um, in the morning <laughs> today, I will upload that when I want. And this is something really sad though, which I will react to. And uh, some YouTubers already did that. Captain Sparkles did it. And some other YouTubers. Now we're gonna react to the game theorist. Goodbye, internet. He is gonna leave YouTube soon. This channel is 13 years old, bro. And only half of it are FNAF theories. And he had like a bunch of good guys, like best friend, and she had a like a bunch of fun. And now my pet is gonna go, bro. And I did watch the Captain Sparkles one. I'm gonna watch that maybe too. And then there are other YouTubers, but yeah, you know what I mean. So. We're gonna watch something emotional, so if you don't like that emotional stuff, click off. I don't like it either, but it's like the truth. So, we're gonna start in 3, 2, 1. It's not clickbait. On March 9th, I will be hosting my last theory episode. At which point, I'll be handing off the channels to someone else. Hopefully you like my star project. <laughs> it's cool. There it is. Oh. That's it. Send tweet. Mm. We're all done here. That's all you need to know, right? I'm gonna cry in this video. Oh, bro. wow. Forgive me, by the way, if I, uh, I'm a little bit more disorganized than usual. That's fine, uh, bro. Normally, I would want to script out something like this pretty precisely. But with an announcement like this, I wanted to bring it back to just us. There, there's no one else in the room. There's no teleprompters. There's no nothing. Mm. It's just the way that this whole thing started. It's a conversation between us. And uh, sorry ending, that bro. I keep getting emotional about this. Um, That's fine, I, I'll, bro. I'll try not Roll to, you, but, but it's a big deal. Roll with you. You know, like, if you think about it, this channel is Steph and my first child, really. Before we had Ollie, before we had Skip. Yeah, Cat Pat, Cat like, Pat Skip. Was this. This was our baby. This channel has been going for 13 years. I think in total it's, it's somewhere around, like, 1,200 theories, and um, only half of those are FNAF. Yeah, Shocking. I know. I know. We actually did stuff that wasn't FNAF related. Yep. But this has been a literal third of my life, and I'm going to miss you. We too, bro. I'm going to miss this. I value what we have here. We're always crying, I bro. I value this conversation, this openness, this relationship that we share. And I'm sad that I won't be able to see you every week. Which then I guess prompts the question of like, why? Why am I doing this now? Why am I making this announcement today? Why am I walking away from the channels? Yep. Well, to be honest, um, it was Tom Scott. You can blame Tom Scott. Tom just did his farewell video and I'm like, huh. Oh, well, he was able to do it. I want to be able to fly away in a helicopter. Obviously, that's not it. Um, but really, my reasons for making this announcement today is probably largely the same as Tom's reasons, or Seth Everman's, or Captain Sparkles, or Papa Meats, or Stampy Longheads. Like, there's a lot of these videos that are Stampy. coming out these days, and there's gonna be a lot more happening throughout this year. Steph and I have known this video would be coming for the last three years. We weren't sure it was necessarily gonna be today. We didn't know exactly when it would fall, but we knew it was gonna happen eventually. That's why over the last couple of years, we've been staffing up so much. That's why we partnered with a larger company to help run the channels. That's why we've been spending so much time outside of this box, training up the team to make the best videos that they can. Because we knew that we couldn't do this forever. We knew that honestly, we didn't want to do this forever. For as much as I love you and I love overthinking things and I love mm. theorizing, I don't love late nights. I don't love the fact that Steph and I have been work first Definitely. for Was he not even better than him? Like where I'm sitting down at dinner with my best friend and we're talking about business logistics or we're talking about animatronic toes. I miss the days where I could just sit down on the couch with her and play video games yeah. and it's not for content or no, I'm playing a game and I'm not thinking about what theories Girl. are going to come out of that. I miss it. So that's, that's a big reason. That was, that was a big one right there. Uh, but also just the internet's changing. My life has changed in the last 13 years. I, I mentioned Dolly before. He's the coolest yeah. little dude. And he's getting older by the minute. And I watch him and he is so much fun. And he is so much smarter 
than I was when I was his age. He also probably knows the FNAF lore better than I do, which is a problem that I should probably address at some point. But honestly, I want to be able to spend more time with him. Another sad fact of the matter is, is I'm getting older. I'm 37 now. The other day, I actually had to Google my own age. And you know that when you have to start like doing math, in your head to calculate how old you are, you are over the hill, my friends. Though to be fair, to my credit, I think I'm like the only 37-year-old out there who has an unironic appreciation of Skibbity Toilet. Then again, yeah. maybe that's the problem, right? <laughs> like, maybe that's not a good thing. And honestly, because know. this is all about us being honest, there is a bit of a selfish side to this. When you think about it, there's only really two ways to step away from a YouTube channel. You either just decide the day that you stop uploading and you're like, I'm done. Or you just keep uploading videos from now until the heat death of the universe and you watch as your relevance slowly dies or your passion slowly dies. And for me and my journey in this place, I always wanted to go out on a high note. And when you stop and look at the last year, this has been the best year in the theorist lifespan ever. Like, no joke. It is our highest view year. Uh, it is the year where we launched style theory and immediately put our foothold in a brand new space. And that took off. And now we're one of the top mm -hmm. style and fashion channels on YouTube. And that kind of completes the trifecta of, hey, we now have a top channel in four different verticals that are completely different. And no other YouTuber really has ever been able to do it to that scale. That's amazing. This is also the year where I was able to meet you guys at our Broadway show. I was able to play at the PGA and show that, hey, you YouTubers aren't particularly good at golf, but they can make your event relevant for like a couple of minutes. It was also the year that I got to host the Streamy Awards and it wasn't cringe. I mean, to be, to be fair, the Streamy Awards are always a little bit cringe, but uh, it, was, it was the right amount of cringe. When I pull up videos of all my favorite creators, and I watch them, and all of a sudden I start hearing people just casually dropping, that's just a theory. It's just a theory, a game theory. Now this is just a theory, people. At the end of the day, it's just a game theory. That's Penguin. just a theory. <laughs> a free birds theory. Also a lot of lore, so if you're a big theory head, proceed at your own risk. I Sorry. did not know about this theory. Or that's a theory. A game. That right there, that is incredible. Mm. That's the note that I want to leave on. And that's how you just know it's the right time. All of those reasons coming together, saying, hey, this is the moment. And that's hard to say because change is scary. Change is hard. Yep, could be scary. But sometimes the right decision isn't the easy decision. The, the easy decision would just be to carry on doing this and do FNAF part 332. That's too much but that right. wouldn't be the right decision. I think the best way to explain it is with a video game analogy. Feels appropriate, right? Whoa, it's game theory, ha! Did it, check the game part of it off. But the way I like to think about it is Earthbound. I think I've made it pretty clear over the years that that is without question my favorite game of all time. Sansa's Nest, all that, you're all familiar with that. But what you might not be familiar with at this point is how the game ends. At the end of Earthbound, after you save the world, everything opens up to you. You can revisit every single location that you've been to, you can talk to every NPC that you met on your journey, and it's, this incredible moment as a gamer. You see just how many lives have been impacted thanks to your journey. And then after spending as much time as you want talking to all those people, you end up back home. You go back to where it all began, where you were just a kid waking up in bed and starting your adventure. And even though your mom's there and your dog's there and your weird telephone dad's there, it feels different somehow. Like, sure, this is still a place of love and acceptance and comfort and security, but you just don't quite fit anymore. Because you just traveled the world. You made all these new friends. You are different, you grew up. And your relationship to this place grows up. It evolves. In case you couldn't tell, I'm Ness. Which uh, I guess would also mean that I'm also Sans. <laughs> but I was also Ness in the FNAF movie, which just opens up all mm. sorts of weird canon. Slap a thumbnail on that one. So anyway, there you have it. That is why I'm leaving. I hope you can understand. But that obviously begs the question of like, what happens to the channels? Well, for the next 10 weeks, we're gonna have ourselves a big old going away party. If Unis Anis taught us anything, it, it taught us honest, that you probably shouldn't bro. use urine 
uh, for a personal sauna. But if Unis Anas taught us two things, one was uh, to not soak in your own urine, but two was to appreciate the time that you have left. So that's why over the next 10 weeks, we're gonna have a bunch of theories that are gonna be a lot of fun, revisiting old favorites, uh, getting some closure on things, we're gonna see some familiar faces, a lot of awesome stuff. Although to be fair, I think it's nine weeks, and I think we counted this one as week one. That was stupid of us. That, my friends, is how you wind up getting Wario being 10 feet tall. Mathematical rigor. Should have double checked the numbers. So I have nine theories left on each of the channels, but we're gonna call them Matt Pat's Final Ten because that just sounds better. At which point then on March 9th, we're gonna have that big going away celebration, Matt Pat's Final Theory, and I just dust away. I stand astride my music man and I just whip a nay nay off into the distance. But then something special happens. Do the channels go away with me? No, actually. I've always thought that anyone can be a theorist, right? If you are passionate about a topic and you love to overthink it and over-research it, then congratulations, you're a theorist. And that could range from, hey, I have family recipes that I'm constantly looking to refine, to, hey, I wanna create the perfect fantasy sports team. Because here's the thing, sports pros, at the end of the day, if you are in the statistics and numbers and doing calculations to see if your team won or lost, you're just playing a glorified Dungeons and Dragons game. I hate to break it to you, you're one of us, my friends. And, and sure, game theory is a format that I created. It's a show with this very excitable host who makes a lot of cringy dad jokes and says the word lore a lot, but at the end of the day, it's more than just the host. It is a show. It is a format, and in a broader sense, it is a state of mind. It's a way of thinking and approaching the world around you. It's more than just the host, and when you think about it, not a lot of YouTube channels function that way. We're special in that regard. Like, you're yeah, not gonna be able right. to get another Markiplier stepping into the Markiplier channel, and you're never gonna be able to recreate Jenna Marbles, and, and to be honest, you're never gonna get another MatPat either, but you can have another game theorist. You can have another film theorist or food theorist or style theorist. I think in a lot of ways, we almost function kind of like the Doctor Who of YouTube, where as one host fades away, a new one kind of respawns in their place. Mm -hmm. And they're able to put their own unique spin and flavor on the format and make it their unique thing. You have eras of the different theorist channels. And so, you know, my era is fading away and someone new is coming in. Maybe this is the David Tennant to Matt Smith transition, right? I was Good, solid series of episodes right there. So who then is gonna be taking over the channels? Well, I don't know if you've noticed this, but fewer and fewer of the words that I'm saying in any given episode are actually mine. If you go down to the credits, you can actually see in the description that there are certain names that have been appearing more and more frequently. Like, yeah, I'm listed on every single one as the writer because I touch every single script, I polish it in my voice, but in all honesty, the bulk of what I'm saying is coming from someone else. It's their research, it's their work. Why should they have to filter their creativity through my voice? I've always envisioned these channels as a place where we could spotlight all sorts of creators. I, I mean, it even goes back to the original URL of this channel, right? It isn't game theory, it was always the game theorists, because this was a place where you could find a lot of like-minded creators, all with a passion for gaming, and education. That's why we had the partner shows like Gaijin Goomba with Culture Shock, or Drake with Smash History, or Ryder with A Brief History, or Austin with The Science, and Lee with The Breakdown. They were all here because we all had a similar goal, to educate people through the lens of gaming. And then YouTube pivoted and then made it so that way doing a channel in that style doesn't really work anymore. But we still tried to keep that ethos alive by making sure that we're regularly covering small indie projects. Stuff like Only Cans, like Mandela Catalog, like OWO. OWO, see, I learned. But if we're doing that for all these other creators, why aren't we doing it for the creators on our own staff who have been in the trenches doing the research, writing these words to deliver to you over the last couple of years? I have been fortunate. I have been so blessed to have this platform available to me that you've given me over the last 13 years. But I think now it's time to pass it on to the next generation. It's time to give someone else a shot. But I realize that I'm getting off track here, so back to the question, who's taking over? First off, it's not going to one person, but rather four. I would not wish my schedule on anyone. Like, sure, I'm willing to not sleep for the last 13 years of my life, but I feel like as old man YouTube passing this along to the next generation, I should probably do my best to try and make it more sustainable for them. It's also going to people that you're already familiar with. You've seen them showing up in shorts. You've seen them here on the couch with me for GT Live. You've sometimes seen them washing their hair with me in my own shower. Don't read too much into that, but it is accurate. Most importantly though, they're each an expert in their own individual subject matter, and they've been spearheading the creative of the channels for the better part of the last year. And I think what's maybe the most fascinating about all of this is that each of the four of them 
come to us from a completely different angle. You know, so for instance, you have Lee, right? Lee's gonna be taking over film theory. And Lee has been with us for 10 years. 10 years, it's crazy. I believe he was actually editor number three for the channels. We had Ronnie, and then we had Ryder, Foot of a Ferret. Uh, and then we had Lee. I think his first theory that he ever worked on was Rosalina's Peach's Daughter, uh, Peach is Dead. One of my all-time favorite episodes that we've ever done on the channel. And over time, he rose up. He had his own show on the channel here. He had Breakdown, which were these just beautiful documentaries yeah, Libro, that were yes. edited in such an incredible way. And since then, he's been spearheading a lot of the creative on both the writing and the visual side. And then, of course, you have Amy over on Style Theory. And Amy is actually a very different case here. When she first approached us, I think it was six years ago, she didn't know about the channels. All she knew was that she wanted to learn everything that she could about digital video, and that Theorist was kind of the place that you went to to learn that stuff. Like, we were the best when it comes to analytics and optimization and programming and things like that. She got in, and she just devoured everything that we threw at her. So much so that she eventually got to the point where she was so good that she was consulting the largest mobile game company in the world based off of the stuff that we were working on here in studio. It's incredible. And all of that while being responsible for packaging somewhere around like 500 episodes across all the channels. And then she helped me and Steph brainstorm style theory for two years before the channel eventually launched, hoping that maybe one day she would be able to rise into the hosting role for it. And now here it is. And then of course you have Santi and Tom. Uh, Santi over on Food Theory and Tom over here on Game Theory. And interestingly enough, they both grew up watching Game Theory. We were their childhood show, which to be fair, just shows how old we are. Santi would eventually go work at Mythical with Rhett and Link before coming here, where he is bravely spearheading Food Theory and letting me mercilessly make fun of all of his recipes. Uh, he's much better than I give him credit for. I just like giving him a hard time. And then Tom, he worked at uh, Disney and Fox but he knew all along that he wanted to be here, right? Like this was his aspirational goal. He wanted to write here. He emailed us a cold email outreach. We just miraculously saw it, decided to audition him, and he crushed it. His first episode that he worked on was actually watching every single installment of the Pokemon anime to calculate Pikachu's level. And to be fair, that was his pitch. Like, I have asked people to do some crazy things in the past, but not even I'm that brutal. Like, you can only watch Team Rocket blast off so many times, but he's like, this is an episode I'm passionate about, I think I'm gonna knock it out of the ballpark, and I'm gonna show you how committed I am. And he has been so committed ever since. So committed, in fact, that I told him, hey, if you're joining the channels, you do realize that you're gonna have to read every single FNAF book. And he's like, boom, he did it. And we're up here going crazy in the FNAF attic. But not only did he read every FNAF novel, he also read every single Hello Neighbor book. Yeah, he went that far. Currently, he's working his way through Bendy because the new movie's coming up. If nothing else, Damn. I think that really proves his level of commitment and also his appropriate level of insanity. <laughs> He's a bit off the cuff at times. Like, I don't know if you saw on a recent GT Live, but uh, Tom was here on the couch with me and he actually denied that the moon existed, which was a choice. Main character from the chat says, that sounds like somebody who doesn't have a flag on the moon. <laughs> oh! I mean, that's if you believe it's even that. Oh! <laughs> the moon? I don't think he actually believes that, but if he does, we're gonna get some uh, weird Majora's Mask theories, let me tell you. When I go out at this point, I am recognized at least five times. It's crazy, it's, it's a really high number at this point. And it's, it's a fascinating split because 50% of the time it's like, oh my gosh, you're MatPat, you were my childhood. I loved watching your FNAF theories. And, and I'm always like, well, you know, FNAF's still going. And they're like, what, no way. And we talk about the new game and it's always really fun. But the other half is, oh my gosh, you're MatPat, you are my childhood. I'm watching you right now, I loved your most recent theory. That's awesome. That's such an honor. I have been so honored to be a part of all of your lives. But I think it's time for someone else to have that honor. I think it's time for someone else to get to ruin some childhoods. And that just kind of leaves us with one final question, right? Which is, what about me? You know, where do I go? Do I just retire to a beach somewhere? Do I whip a nene off into the distance? No. I'll still be here. Uh, obviously, first off, we've got our final 10 episodes, like I said, so that's well, it wasn't 10 episodes. It, however many episodes are left between now and March 9th, we got those. Uh, I'm going to be on GT Live from now until the foreseeable future, probably until the end of the summer, that feels about right. And then we have the big going away video on March 9th. After that, I, you know, stand aside as Santi, Lee, Amy, and Tom step up and take over the hosting role. But 
I'm still going to be here. I'm still going to be alongside the creative directors talking about programming, brainstorming ideas for upcoming episodes. That's awesome. I love that. I don't want to give that up. But the other cool thing about this is that it opens up the door for me to turn the script. For the last 13 years, I've been commenting on other people's IP. But now that I'm stepping out of those roles, I get to create the IP. Still as a part of theorist, but I get to create things that are going to challenge those new hosts of the channel. Things that I've had in the back of my mind from years of studying media that I can now make a reality and the channels can comment on them. Things like, for instance, I have a lo-fi mystery series that I think you're really gonna dig. It's basically like if you took a lo-fi channel and applied an ARG narrative to it, it becomes lore-fi. I am so stoked about this. The music is sounding really good. The animations are coming together really well. That's going to be launching in a couple weeks. We'll see if Lee over on Film Theory is going to be able to solve it. In April, I'm actually going to be coming back onto Style Theory to host a giant fashion show that we're doing there. We all collectively had this thought of like, hey, online brands, online influencers are coming up with their own apparel lines. Why is there no place to showcase that sort of stuff? And then it hit us like, hey, we have a style and fashion channel. Why aren't we doing it ourselves? Creators in Fashion by Style Theory, that is coming to you in April, hosted by me some of the time that I'm not hosting the channels, I'm going to be practicing my runway walk. Because let me tell you, if I'm sashaying down the runway, if I'm stomping the runway, it's not going to be pretty right now. So I need to practice that a little bit. There's also this animation show that we did a pilot for in like the middle of last year. It's basically like if you took Gravity Falls, but aged it up and made it about adulting. It's really, really solid. And also there's this video game idea that I want to do for like so long that I've never had the opportunity to really like dive into and, and make reality. But now it's my chance to step into the role of Scott Cawthon and challenge the new game theorist. There's always been the memes about are Scott Cawthon and I the same person? Not yet, but who knows? Maybe starting later this year. And those are just the immediate things that I have on my to-do list because I want to make fun, cool things for you. And even if it's not a weekly episode, I still want to give those things to you because I think you'll like them. You matter to me. You are so important to me. Every single one of those people who stopped me on the street, it's an honor, right? It's interesting. Because of this whole transition, I've been thinking a lot about my time on these channels and the evolution that we've gone to together. In the beginning, right, I was kind of like the edgy older brother <laughs> where I would talk about like, oh, did you know that Link is dead? And let's make some boob jokes. And then at a certain point, I evolved into Dad Pat, right? I, I became a little bit more mature. I had the team around me. Uh, I had to be more careful about who I was saying was dead on a regular basis. Uh, instead of talking about boobs, I ended up talking about Luigi's bulge. That felt like the right decision. At this point, I think I'm kind of evolving into a, a Grandpa Pat, you know, for lack of a better term. Uh, yeah. And just like your grandparents, hopefully cool grandparents, but uh, just like a grandparent, you know, you don't get to see me all the time. And I don't get to see you all the time. And maybe we call and talk to each other every once in a while. But, but at the end of the day, that grandpa loves getting to see you. Maybe he shows up at a special event. Maybe he shows up at a holiday. Uh, maybe he shows up at the, the Theory Wear fashion show. <laughs> Who knows? But he so looks forward to seeing you. And the love that he has for you, it doesn't go away. That grandpa is so proud of you. And he cherishes the relationship that you've had so much. And he is so honored to be a part of your life. To have been a part of helping you grow and helping you experience the world. And he looks forward to seeing you at the next event. And if you see him on the street, we'll hang out. And hopefully he brings you cool, fun gifts. I know this is gonna sound cheesy. And I know the internet will probably break me over the coals for crying for one, but I love you guys. You're not just numbers. You're not just ad impressions. You're not just merch sales. What you have done for me, and from everyone I talk to, what I've done for you is special. It's special. When I was in middle school, I had this goal of making the world a better place because I had been a part of it. 
It didn't have to be big. It didn't have to be curing cancer. But I wanted there to have been a ripple impact just because I was there. Butterfly effect and all that. We've done it. I think we've been able to achieve something great here. You have taken me on the wildest, craziest, 13-year ride of my life. I'm so grateful. So, Grandpa Pat is going to sign out now. And I'll be around for a couple more weeks. I'll be living around the house for a while. We'll have a big uh, family reunion celebration. Then I'll go off to my little shack in the woods, my retirement home down in Florida. And I'll, I'll pop in every once in a while. Anyway, uh, at this point in my notes, I had it written that we're going to start the countdown clock of that like final 10 episodes, final nine episodes. So start that. I don't know what it's going to look like yet. Uh, hopefully the editors don't rip off Unisana's too much. If they do, I hope they change it. Um, and with that, and with that, I'm going to say for one of the final times, not the final time, but one of the final times, as always, my friends, remember, it's just a theory. A game theory. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Bro. I didn't cry, but... I still kind of have tears in there, I'm not gonna lie to you. We'll miss you, my pet, bro. We'll miss you. Nine theories. I think I will react to his last theories. Maybe I will react to Captain Sparkles. Maybe retirement. See what he has to say. Probably the ones that I don't, don't want to do that because it's so sad, bro. It's so sad. It's it's even forty. It's even on the on the in the trends, bro. At forty three, at forty three, in the trends, bro. Forty three place. YouTube, bro. Nah, YouTube is not gonna be the same without him, bro. No, it's not gonna be. Guys. We're all gonna be with Method, bro. Go to his channel, watch his last nine theories, bro. If you want to do that. Even though he kind of gets hate for that. There, are, I saw some videos where they exposed him and stuff. But like, why he sucks and that and that. Some people selling like, saying in the comments, I'm way smarter than this. Like, some spam bots, bro. Saying I'm smarter than Method. Bro, just don't get to these people, bro. Um, thank you, Method, for all you've done to us. Thanks for having me. Being in my childhood, I watched him sometimes. He was good. Guys. And I'm gonna sign out too. And yeah, you said, as well as I said, new generation is gonna be. I'm, I'm still not the new generation. Maybe you'll think that, but I've already been over three years on YouTube. The new generation is like from zero subscribers and stuff. I'm already, I'm in the middle generation, let's just say that. <sighs> yeah. And hopefully we'll get 1,000 subscribers. It goes higher and higher. Imagine I will get 100,000 subscribers. I'm gonna get a play button here, bro. This will be cool. But we're gonna go to the thousands because I think I think it will not be more. <laughs> but thousands, I think we can do that. So even Android, bro. Imagine, guys. Android, I'm um, like kind of side off YouTube and came back. He came back, but Android almost where it was gone. Completely. Imagine that. Android and maybe some other YouTubers that came back. Yeah. And that's like sad, man. If, if Android is not gonna do more music and stuff, it's gonna be really sad too. Yeah, bro. Thank you guys for all the support for me and for him, though. Yeah, we have 40, yeah, it's a lot of subscribers, for, over 40 million or something. Yeah, guys, just wanna say you, it hurts. Hopefully, you didn't cry that much and get that emotion. And maybe I'll we'll watch Captain Sparkle's video and see what he has to say. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace.